Shobana, let's talk a little bit about intellectual merit and broader impacts of projects. Sure, these are two very important aspects of a Dell project. Um, so let's start with intellectual merit, the ways in which a project can deepen our understanding about human language. There are many ways this can happen, so some examples of intellectual merit uh, have to do with just creating documentary materials. So if a project promises the creation of a grammar or a dictionary or any kind of material that will give us access to the language, uh, that would be con considered good intellectual merit because each language holds a key to what human language is about. So any material that can present that to scientists and community members would be considered good for intellectual merit. Some other kinds of intellectual merit that people don't often think about have to do with the ways in which traditional knowledge, traditional ecological knowledge, for example, is captured in a language. So somebody could write about the language and give us material about the language, but also then give us information about how a botanical species are named, or astronomy, information about ethnomusicology, um, or other aspects of the, the culture and about the land. I think you have a good example of a project like that. Yeah, there's a really great project that Kenneth Frank, who's a native speaker of the Guichen language, and Craig Mishler, who's an anthropologist, did on caribou. Mm -hmm. And the complete language and understanding of caribou from the natural history of the caribou to the traditional ecological knowledge that Guichen elders held about the caribou the basic words for the different parts of caribou. And in delving so deeply into that project, they discovered that the Gwich'in people have meta-language to discuss the different pieces of their own language. Mm -hmm. And so that's not something we think of very often in terms of Alaska Native languages, how people intellectualize the language themselves. And so that was a really uh, wonderful intellectual merit outcome of a project that originally started more as documentation. Yeah, that's fantastic. So there was linguistic data from the conversations about the caribou. There was information about the caribou itself and how one can think about the different parts of it. And then this meta language that came out so gave us even more of a level of intellectual information. So that's exactly. a great marrying together exactly. of different fields. And on the NSF Awards database, I believe you can find, and I know you can find, other Dell projects that have been awarded that take this kind of interdisciplinary um, approach to documenting endangered languages. And that's very much um, appreciated as an intellectual merit. Absolutely. Proposal. And also we talk about um, archival projects, archiving and database creation, storage uh, facilities for languages in terms of intellectual merit. Sometimes databases have that intellectual interest in and of themselves and how they're created. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So archival materials can be used to um, further our understanding of language because we can look back uh, years from now uh, and compare the languages that were spoken, say, 100 years ago with what we have today and learn about how language has progressed through time. Uh, there are several examples of this, uh, of, of our having made awards to archival projects recently. Uh, some of them are from, one of them is from the University of Hawaii, where they've created an archive for um, languages of the Pacific Rim region, where there are many, many uh, different, um, uh, s very small um, repositories of language information in that area, and just to try to bring those all together so they can be accessed both by community members and by by linguists and right. other academics. And another wonderful project is the Alaska Native Languages Archival Project, which both of our programs invested in, where the first project they undertook was the digitizing of the Central Yupik language material that was collected primarily by one uh, linguist, Dr. Michael Krauss, at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where he'd been gathering for decades, primarily written materials, but a lot of analog tapes. Mm -hmm. And so the intellectual merit, some of that was simply salvage and being sure that the analog tapes didn't deteriorate. And, but also giving communities access to the information and linguists access to such a large corpus of materials about one language 
um, allows them to think in new and innovative ways about uh, the central Yupik language and what it can contribute to our understanding of language as a whole. That's, that's a really good point when you're talking about having a lot of information on one language. This is one of the new ways in which the Documenting Endangered Languages program is focusing its funds, and that is on new computational methods and new computational ways of dealing with language. So having a large language archive allows us to then uh, resource all of the computational progress that we made in dealing with language data. Uh, there are many different ways in which projects can uh, go in and create intellectual merit for their language proposals. Um, but I, I think, would you agree with me that it's very important for people to contact their oh, program absolutely. officer when they're thinking about putting these together? Absolutely key. And I think people are sometimes shy to contact us, that yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. We try to be helpful, and it's really important that you can email us. Our emails are on the web. Um, you can call us. Most of our direct line phone numbers are also on the NSF website. And it's really important to use us as sounding boards mm -hmm. for your ideas. Uh, of intellectual merit and broader impacts as well, which we'll talk about. Um, I think that's key. Your first step should be uh, talk to the NSF program okay. director. Um, and I think that you know, we often mention this to people who come with us with ideas uh, that to strengthen your intellectual merit portion of your proposal, you would really want to you know, consult with a linguist or a community member that's been trained in language science or linguistics. Um, and there are ways that you can perhaps put in a proposal collaboratively with a linguist, um, and there are new funds available for that. So contact your program officer and they can tell you how, how that would work. It is important to make your project competitive at the National Science Foundation in the Documenting Endangered Languages a program to collaborate with a formally trained language scholar. One of the things about broader impacts is that you could have a proposal that trains community members. So Absolutely. why don't we turn to broader impacts now? Yeah, that's great. Let's talk a little bit about broader impacts. The broader impacts are basically the broader societal uh, impacts of this investment uh, that the federal government is making in uh, a language and in language documentation. One is to train community members to do this documentation themselves. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of ways in which you can do that. There are institutes that train community members. The specific scholars working with your project can help train community members. And that's a great source because we found out with a lot of scientists that you can't always be in one place 24-7, 300 plus days out of the year, but community members are there. There's also community members have such a deep knowledge of their language, even if they're not themselves native speakers, um, a family member may be, and the rapport uh, really helps uh, with a project. So the broader impacts, the broader societal benefits are important, and training community members is just one of those. You can also do formal student mm -hmm. training. Uh, creating materials for um, use in the classroom, both for K through 12 uh, appropriate learning, but also for adult learners. And frequently, adult materials are really needed in these uh, in your communities, and that's a really important part. One of the broader impacts uh, that comes directly from the intellectual merit is the creation of orthographies. So we have to have good orthographies to create dictionaries and write grammars. But when linguists help with the creation of orthography, directed, of course, by community members and what they feel their orthography should look like, that opens up a whole possibility of being able to write the language and do the kinds of things you were talking about that April Counselor and the, the Council of uh, the Elliptic worked on. So that's a good broader impact that one could add to their Absolutely. Their and one of the broader impacts I want to talk about is bringing elders together and how much you can learn. And frequently, like in Alaska, uh, people who uh, speak the language fluently are very far apart. And sometimes the experience of being able to bring elders together, um, I know of certain cases in Kamchatka where we funded the Ethelman language, it was bringing elders together who didn't even realize that other people still spoke their language. 
And so having the opportunity for natural speech mm -hmm. and being to meet other members of their, in their age group that still spoke the Edelman language mm -hmm. was not only really powerful emotionally, but also very powerful for understanding uh, the language itself. Yeah. yeah. So, that, that, so bringing people together uh, and older speakers, that's very important. And so we had talked about archiving under intellectual merits. We can look at archiving and, and the use in broader impacts. So elder speaking and having documents and recordings of elder speaking, once a language has been sleeping for a while, hasn't been used for a while, we're seeing nowadays that people can go back to those archives and engage their community members in those archives and try to reclaim their language, reclaim their heritage. So that's a really powerful, broader impact of creating strong, useful documentary materials. So again, I think if someone could, uh, you know, you can peruse the web and you can see many you know, human Absolutely. interest stories that talk about the broader impacts of Dell as well as our NSF Awards database. But I, I think it's important for PIs or pr the principal investigators to know that there is a real difference between intellectual merit and broader impacts. And both of these have to be clearly stated in their projects and their summaries and their descriptions. So I think um, you know there are some samples up on the web Absolutely. where uh, uh, proposers can go and look these up. Uh, the NEHDEL website has some samples that they can look at. And again, call they can call us for help. Absolutely, call the program director, contact us. That's the most important thing, and that seems to get lost all the time. People are sometimes shy about it, right. and you shouldn't be because your colleagues won't be, and right. as a result, they'll have more competitive proposal. Great talking to you. Great, you too. Thanks.